Hi there, and welcome to Onco Daily Talks. I am Ellen, the managing editor of Onco Daily, and it is my pleasure to host today Professor Andreas Herlambas, a professor in oncology and palliative nursing care at the Cyprus University of Technology and an adjunct professor at the University of Turku, Finland, for a transformational conversation on digital healthcare. Hi, Professor Herlambas, and thanks for being here today. Hi, Ellen. Uh, hi, everyone to our audience. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. And of course, it's a pleasure to be able to present uh, this um, innovative um, uh, project on digital skills. Thank you. Thank you as well. For those who don't already know, Professor Carol Lambus is the founder and the past president of the Cyprus Oncology Nursing Society, the past president of the European Oncology Nursing Society, and the immediate past president of the European Cancer Organization. Today, he will be introducing us a project called Transition. So, Professor Carol Lambus, without uh, further ado, I would like to ask you the first question. Can you start by giving us an overview of the Transition project and what is this and and what are the main objectives of it? Uh, thank you so much for, for the question. Uh, the project transition, it's an um, uh, EU funded project. Uh, it was uh, funded with um, uh, 2.3 million. And the aim of the project is to train healthcare professionals on digital skills, but also uh, healthcare managers which are both uh, heavily involved in, in cancer care are different paths of the cancer uh, continuum. When it comes to the transition project, it brings together 25 partners from uh, 14 member states. And these partners uh, bring to the consortium different kinds of expertise. So for example, we do have uh, universities we have uh, cancer centers, we have patient associations and so on. So we, we try to bring together an expertise that complements each other so that um, a very high level education on digital skills uh, can be uh, produced. And the project is planned um, uh, to end in, um, in August 2025. Uh, the project started back in March uh, 2023. So it, it is um, a 2.5 years uh, project. And at this point, we are running at Web Package 5, which is uh, the actual training piloting of the, of the training. Thanks. That sounds quite a rich program. Uh, why is enhancing digital competencies among healthcare professionals so crucial? And how does transition aim to achieve this? That's a, a very good question. Um, as part of um, not only the EU beating cancer plan, but also as part of the mission of the European Commission is um, a digital transformation within um, healthcare, but also life in general. So um, healthcare, the healthcare sector needs to be ready in order to be able to fully comprehend and fully integrate the many technological innovations that are taking place at the moment, or they have taken place uh, already. So what we, what we have realized from many reports, many studies uh, so far that preceded the project transition is that um, healthcare professionals are considered uh, ill-prepared or not prepared at all in order to uh, fully grasp um, the full potential of these technological solutions. So for example, when you don't have the manpower to put in place the best innovation in the world, it won't work. So we thought and um, we designed the project in such a way in order to be able to develop digital skills, but also to upskill those um, who already have some kind of uh, digital level uh, skills 
uh, in healthcare. And when, when we refer to healthcare, we are referring to um, uh, all the cancer continuum from prevention uh, to cure, survivorship, and end of life uh, care. So from our point of view, it's critical for healthcare professionals and health managers to uh, to to possess these kind of digital skills in order to be able to provide uh, the care that it's promised uh, to the European citizens, not only for now, but the, the years uh, to come as well. And from a, a research point of view, uh, we can definitely anticipate the fact that um, technological solutions will infiltrate uh, the lives of uh, European citizens and, and on a global scale much more. And we have all experienced uh, recently the, the COVID-19 pandemic, which um, uh, increased the pace of all these digital solutions being uh, introduced in healthcare. Yeah. So, so we do need to take measures today in order to prepare um, the cancer workforce in a better uh, way. Yes, and it takes everyone to do their step in achieving this. So the program targets a wide range of professionals from oncology nurses to health managers, and as I understand, not just oncology. So do applicants need to have certain backgrounds to join the program, or in simpler terms, who can apply? Well, thank you for the question. Indeed, the, the transition program is a very um, personalized one in terms that um, we have taken into consideration the views of um, relevant stakeholders and potential end users. So uh, the transition project offers different paths in order to complete uh, the digital skills training. So, for example, as you very well described. Uh, you don't have to be uh, an oncology professional to do the training. Um, it is um, enough if you come in contact with uh, cancer patients at any point of the cancer continue uh, to be able to do the training. And in terms of the training, uh, we have identified um, disciplines or professions such as oncology nurses, medical oncologists, uh, psychologists, surgical oncologists, radiotherapists, and so on that could benefit from this um, training. And um, one other uh, interesting point that transition brings is that in its in nurturing the uh, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approach to training. So one of the modules that it's offer, it's a combined module that brings all these healthcare professionals from different backgrounds uh, together so that um, not only in theory, but also in practice, when they learn about these digital skills, they don't learn them in a social vacuum, but they do acquire the knowledge, the competence, and the skills within a multidisciplinary setting. Well, uh, so uh, it, as I understand, there are modules, and are all those modules uh, necessary for everyone, or some people can take some modules and others can take others? Absolutely, yes. Not all the modules are relevant to all the, the participants. So the participant will have the option, depending on his or her um, background, to follow a specific path um, uh, during the training. So, for example, there's a different path for oncology nurses, there's a different path for medical oncologists, and, and so on. So, depending on the specialty and the um, desire of the end user, uh, the pathway will adjust um, to his or her needs and, and preferences. Of course, there is some uh, modules which are um, uh, um, compulsory for everyone so that all the, the necessary credits are earned so that uh, certification can be um, delivered at the end of the training. And uh, one, one and um, if I may add here one aspect of um, 
uh, of who can join the training. I have to clarify here that uh, you don't need to have any kind of uh, previous training when it comes to, to digital skills. We have designed the project in such a way so uh, every kind of user from novice to expert can do um, the training. The only thing that you need is access uh, to, to the internet and, and, and that's it. That's the only requirement that uh, you need um, to have for joining and taking the course. So if I want to join as a trainee or a trainer, uh, what will we be discussing and how much time will be required for me to dedicate for the program for each option? If Okay, uh, uh, in, in terms of the trainer, we have introduced a very different approach to what people might have in mind. So these trainers will not be actually doing the training themselves because uh, from the extensive mapping of, um, of the literature, uh, the mapping of digital skills in these 14 uh, member states, UX design workshops, and, and many other um, uh, data um, resources, we have come to the conclusion for that for this kind of training, the training type needs to be uh, self-directed. So in real life, you will not need a, a trainer to train you how to take um, the, the transition uh, digital skills uh, curriculum. Uh, the trainers will be prepared for sustainability reasons when the transition project ends in August 2025, because the vision is for transition not to end there, but to have people in place who can facilitate new healthcare professionals, new health uh, care managers who want to do this training beyond the lifespan of transition. So we are working very proactively here to prepare these people to be in place in different um, uh, European countries and globally in order to take this role. Coming back to your question, what is the requirement uh, for someone to become a, a trainee or what is the amount of uh, time it's needed? It's the, the, the training, it does not go beyond um, 10 hours. It's a very highly uh, specific uh, program and it is designed in order to be able to uh, support and guide uh, trainees um, through um, digital platforms and doing the actual uh, training. These people have the same criteria as, uh, as a trainee, so they, they can be working in clinical practice, they can be healthcare professionals from a wide background, they can be health managers and so on. So it's, it's basically for everyone who, can, um, who comes in contact with cancer patients. Uh, the program sounds really extensive and uh, time-consuming to arrange. So I want to ask, who are the key contributors in designing the curriculum and what expertise did they bring to the table? Well, I can tell you that it took um, a, a long time to develop the, the program. So I did mention in, in the beginning that... Um, um, the consortium brings uh, together a very wide um, array of expertise. So we we do have uh, universities, we do have cancer centers, we have patients um, associations, we have expertise in uh, designing um, digital uh, innovations. We do have experts in um, gamification, immersive uh, reality, and serious gaming, for example, to make uh, to be able to make the the trainee much more attractive um, uh, to the trainer or the trainee. Uh, but also in in terms of um, uh, people who contributed. I also mentioned that we, we did an extensive mapping of the uh, different training programs in these 14 member states. And we did identify uh, through 
uh, key experts in those countries uh, what those programs were and where the the gaps were in terms of uh, training someone to acquire digital skills within uh, oncology. We also um, uh, did extensive um, uh, UX uh, design um, workshops with patients, patient advocates, um, healthcare professionals, and health managers in order to grasp their uh, preferences, wants, and um, in order to be able to make the program much more relevant. Although the transition training is not addressed to patients or patient advocates, in most cases, we do see that healthcare professionals, they do handle digital solutions that are directed to patients and patients advocates. So from our point of view, from the project point of view, we consider that their view was essential to be reflected in any kind of training that um, we have um, undertaken. And of course, uh, as part of uh, these uh, workshops, um, and we also had uh, eDelphi um, uh, surveys, which also collected uh, different perspectives and points of view in order to have a better grasp of what needs to be included um, in, the, in the training. So it was uh, an extensive uh, piece of work that uh, brought everyone who is involved or should have been involved in this training uh, together and in order to be able to formulize a training program that it's for the now and and for the next day as well. So, uh, Professor Charlambas, say we complete everything, we go through this uh, training, how do we graduate? Is there an exam or what kind of acknowledgement there is at the end uh, when we finish the program? Absolutely. Um, of course, um, as I mentioned, the, the program is self-directed, but within the pro program, there is a, a self-assessment. So uh, before being able to, um, to finalize the program, you need to take the exam. The exam is, of, of course, reflecting the content of, of the training. And once someone completes successfully uh, the exam, then the system will provide the, uh, co the corresponding certification uh, to he or her, uh, depending on successful uh, completion. So um, the, the program, the, the training, I forgot to mention this and it's crucial, it's provided free of charge uh, to everyone, but it's also accredited. So um, it, it's going to be accredited by the European Cancer Organization. Um, participants will, will be provided with CMEs and oncology nurses will be provided with corresponding uh, credits uh, from another organization. Thank you. Um, looking ahead, what are your thoughts on the future of digital care? Uh, and how do you see the initiatives like Transition shaping that future? Because for now, these days, it seems like we're really slow in digitalizing the healthcare system. Well, thank you so much for this question. It's a very, it's a very relevant uh, question. I, I do think we are a, a bit slower than we should have been, but um, it, it's not easy to to understand the necessity of being well prepared uh, for the present and, and the future. Uh, we, we see immersive and innovative technologies infiltrating uh, healthcare um, every day. Um, whether those are uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, um, even robots, in uh, in healthcare, but we do we do need the the healthcare professional or the healthcare workforce in general to be uh, better and well prepared in order to be able to work with these um, innovations. And the most important thing is 
integrating those innovations within the existing clinical pathways. So we, we shouldn't be viewing digital uh, innovations or digital technology as something that it's on top of our work. Those technologies need to be part of our work. So we need a successful integration. And that successful integration comes from training, um, such as the training provided by the transition uh, project. And transition project cannot be um, the first or the last in this line of um, um, in, in this line of training. We we do need to have this uh, lifelong and ongoing training for our workforce because uh, with technologies changing, updating, um, developing new ones, your knowledge needs to be able to keep up with those uh, developments in order to be able for you, for me, to be able to function efficiently and effectively in this um, digitized um, environment. And if I may add here, in, in the European context, for example, much steps have been taken on a policy uh, level in order to better prepare the regulatory for uh, the European um, Cancer uh, Imaging Initiative. Oh, Professor, sorry, my connection interrupted for some reason. It's okay, it's okay. Um, so, Ellen, shall yeah. I continue? And you will... Yeah, we will so, end. You can continue. Okay, so I was... Um, um we i was just saying that um we also have the european cancer imaging initiative which invites um, cancer centers from all over europe to donate digital images in order to be able to push um, um research in this field and be able to understand and uh, cancer um at the at the more early stages. So all these um, regulatory changes, they, they are here to stay and they're here to define the framework of uh, how uh, cancer care and care in general will be practiced in the years to come. So yes, training, preparation, and making be people much more digitally literate is a necessity and not a luxury. Yes, and thank you because this is a great opportunity. It's free for everyone who wants to join. And at some point, we're going to have to take this training because uh, everything is moving forward with the digital health assistance to healthcare professionals. And thank you for providing this opportunity worldwide for anyone to, who wants to join to have the opportunity to do so. And thanks again for today's interview. I think it was very informative and I hope that your program will really be successful, which I'm sure it will be. And I hope we can catch up with the results. Thank you so much for the invitation. I would be happy to update your audience in, in any other uh, developments within the digital space that we are all living in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.